Hello, everyone. I'm Shukrita Sankaran from Mumbai. And uh, thank you all for being here today. And uh, I am uh, somebody who lo I love writing stories and poems. And uh, you can uh, read some of my work on my website, uh, www.shukritasankaran.com. And today I'm very, very happy that uh, to narrate a beautiful story, hopefully beautiful by the end of it, I guess. Uh, let's see. A story called Menika and the Warrior Spirit. Hello, I'm the warrior spirit. I'm invisible, but you can sense me if you are aware. I'm available to everyone, especially during dark and difficult times. Paulo Coelho, the famous author, wrote about people who are warriors of light. Warriors of light are those people who don't have time sometimes to think of the enemy's blows and they rely on their intuition and they obey their inner angel as they move in life. And today, as the warrior spirit, I am going to tell you a story about a girl named Menika who somehow in her life discovered me. Menika was a girl of 18 living in Mumbai with her family. Her family consisted of her mother, her father, her uncle, her aunt, her brother and sister. They were a very, very close-knit family. They loved each other very much. But one peculiarity about this family was that Menika was not allowed to do anything by herself. She had to take the permission of her elders for every little decision. As the years went by, she found herself feeling very restless. One day, when Menika was making tea in the afternoon for her mother in the kitchen, she asked her mother, Mom, why is it that I need to ask your permission and everybody's permission for everything that I do? Can't I take any decision on my own? I see my friends traveling, doing nice courses, traveling the world and meeting friends and exploring life. And here I am at 18. I'm feeling very, very sad. I don't know, mom. Please tell me why, why? Manika's mother looked at her and said, Dear child, don't question this. This is how it is. We all love you and we care about you. So that is it. I think it is better to accept things as they are. Manika just put her head down and walked out of the kitchen. The next day she met her friend Suchi, her very, very close friend. Suchi had come to her to a house to tell her that she was traveling to America to do further studies in a fancy, nice place in a beautiful university. And Menika, after hearing her, somehow felt even more sad. She was stuck here in Mumbai. She couldn't go anywhere. She was wondering how she could approach her family with this desire of hers to travel and to do more in life. But she knew what the answer would be. It would always be a no because of this reason or that. So she asked Suji, do you think I will be able to come with you maybe someday? Suji said, Manika, I know your story. I've known your family for so long. I think it's better you accept things as they are. So as the days went by, she felt that a bandage was being tied around her and it was becoming tighter and tighter. She was suffocating. She would, I would see her get up in the middle of the night in horror. Maybe she had a bad dream. But I felt sorry for Menika. I was there, but she did not know I was around. Me, the warrior spirit, waiting. 
One day, she was making tiffin for her father in the morning. Menika loved her father very, very much. And her entire family had gone on a holiday. So it was only she and her father at home. In fact, they'd gone to a remote place, the rest of them, where they could not be reached over the cell phone. In one way, Menika was relieved that she would have a few days of freedom for herself and to be with her dear father, whom she loved very, very much. As she was filling his tiffin for work, she heard a loud sound in the room. She rushed to her father's room and she saw him on the floor, drenched in sweat and clutching his abdomen. He was breathless. Menika looked at him and said, Father, what's happening? Did you just fall off the chair? What's wrong, father? He couldn't speak. Menika quickly called up her general practitioner on the phone. And he, she said, Doctor, something has happened to father. This is what's, he, you know, he's drenched in sweat. Something's wrong. The general practitioner told her to calm down and tell her the exact symptoms. So she did narrate them on the phone quickly. He said, Menika, I would like you to be very calm as I say this. Your father may have a heart attack. So I would like you to take him to the nearest emergency medical service and get him checked out there. Get an ECG done and get a sonography also done in case there's any other issue. Menika's hands were shivering. She was all, her hands became clammy. She didn't know what to do. She just put the phone down. She looked at father. She somehow picked him up and lay him on the bed. Then she he tried to hail a cab to take him to the nearest hospital. The problem was on that particular day, it was Holi in India. Holi is a festival of colors and it is a very, very big public holiday. So to even to get a taxi and to go to a hospital was a task. Menika struggled somehow and she took her father in the taxi to the emergency medical service of the hospital. This was at 5 p.m. Uh, when they finished all the tests at the emergency medical services. She's, she was there since 10 a.m. So it, has been, it had been a couple of hours till they did all the uh, tests for her father. Finally, they said, he needs to have an angioplasty. You need to contact a cardiologist. Menika was frantically trying to reach her mother, but her mother's phone was out of reach. She didn't know what to do. What do I do? Whom do I call? She was all alone in the hospital here with her father. And then the doctor from the EMS, the emergency medical service came out and said, look, we have a list of cardiologists on, on this paper. You please choose whom you want and do something quickly. You need to act quickly. Menika looked at the list. She didn't know any of them. It all seemed like Greek and Latin and she was confused. But as she just closed her eyes and she said a short prayer in her mind, she opened her eyes and one name called out to her. It was Dr. Prabhakaran. She told the doctor, can we contact Dr. Prabhakaran right away? So... The EMS doctor said, yes, I shall do that. I shall get you in touch with him. He dialed Dr. Prabhakaran and Menika spoke to him over the phone. She explained her father's condition. And the doctor said, I know, I know this hospital, I will manage it, but you will need to shift him to another hospital because here there is no ICU bed available. Oh my God, thought Menika, this can't get any worse. How is my father going to survive? So the doctor said, you know, we will arrange an ambulance for, to shift your father from this hospital to the next hospital. And that's where I will meet you. Menika again was desperately trying her mother. She had sent several messages. There was no response. She had sent a message to her brother's phone, her sister's phone. There was no response from the rest of the family. She didn't know what to do. But she, there was no time. 
there was no time to think. There was no time at all. So she had to rush. She just told the doctor, yes, doctor, just do what you can, but please save my father. So they arranged for an ambulance and Manika sat in the ambulance with her father and he had the drips on and some medications were going on and God knows what. And she, it was all a blur and she just sat there as they took her to the next hospital. By the time they reached there, it was 10 p.m. And it, she didn't know what to do. She reached that hospital and Dr. Prabhakaran was waiting for her. He said, come on, Menika, we need to take him to the OT. We'll do an angiography. And she went in there to the OT floor. It was absolutely deserted because there were no operations scheduled at that time. It was dark. It was, it was in the middle of the night almost now. It was on, nearing 11.30. And it was cold. The OT floor was freezing. But none of this mattered. Menika just went with Dr. Prabhakaran and sat and waited outside the OT as is the angiography. She then looked at her phone and she wanted to pray. So she put on the beautiful Hanuman Chalisa and she heard, she closed her eyes and she repeated the mantras as the Hanuman Chalisa was playing. She wanted really some intervention, some divine intervention to save her father at this point. She did not know if what she was doing was right or wrong. She was just going with the flow. I saw all of this. I saw all of this happen to her. Me, the warrior spirit. I saw it. I saw her as she closed her eyes and she was deep in prayer. And as she heard the words, Jai Hanuman Gyan Gunasagar Jai Kapi Siddhi Lok of Jagar Ram Duta Atulita Baladhama Anjani Putri Pavana Sutanama The mantras went on. And as it and after some time, doc, she was called by Dr. Prabhakaran in the OT. And she, he said, look at the screen, Menika. Your father has four blockages. I need your consent on this paper if you want me to do an emergency angioplasty right away. Menika, Menika looked at the paper. She didn't know what to do. Again, she was wondering, can I ask somebody? Can I do something? She was thinking to herself. Dr. Prabhakaran said, if you want, you can wait. But the more you wait, the more risk to your father's life. Menaka said, no, doctor. I'll give you my consent. And she signed on the consent papers. All this was so new and so different for Menaka, But she did it. And then she was again told to wait outside as the angioplasty went on. It was 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m. Finally, at 4 a.m., somebody came out of the OT and said, please come inside. So she went there and saw Dr. Prabhakaran finally smile and say, it was done. It was difficult, but it was done. Your father will be okay. Menika just went to him. And shook his hands profusely. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Thank you so much. You saved my father. And then she looked at Dr. Prabhakaran. He was wearing a, a, his surgical cap and he was still in his scrubs. And on his cap, it was written, PCI warrior. So she asked Dr. Prabhakaran, doctor, what is that? What's written on your cap? So Dr. Prabhakaran said, Menika, I am a warrior. I am a PCI warrior. I deal with life and death situations every single day. This is my job. This is what I do. But if I would be frank, Menika, today, when I saw you all by yourself taking all these decisions for your father, I thought that you are the warrior. You have that spirit within you. Usually when I come out of the OT, an entire family is waiting there to greet me and to ask what happened. Yo, you are all alone. Where is your family? Did you ask anybody about me? What happened? Tell me. Menaka said, no, no, doctor. There was no time. They all are out on a holiday and I can't reach them on the phone. I really can't. So here I am, doctor. I can't say much more. Dr. Prabhakaran said, Menaka, 
you have the warrior spirit. You have something within you and you have saved your father today. Not me. I was just an instrument. Menika just looked at Dr. Prabhakaran. She didn't know what to say. A whole 24, more than 24 hours had passed since the heart attack at home. And here she was at the hospital. Suddenly, she felt like the bandages that had tied her all these years slowly unravel. She felt like the caterpillar, you know, which is in the chrysalis and it's trying to struggle to come out and finally trying to be that, that butterfly. But she could feel that pain and that struggle and she could feel a little bit of freedom, a little less suffocated at that moment. A little more belief in herself to take her own decisions. And that's when I met her. Me, the warrior spirit. Thank you for listening in to me. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much. What a great story. Really? Fantastic. Thank you. Is that a Thanks. is that a story that you made up or is it from a personal experience or Yes, so it is uh, something, uh, yes, it is a personal experience because it just happened to my father. This did happen to my father and I was alone. And I, uh, uh, but I did use a little bit of creative freedom in the way I put the story together. So sure. I would say it would be something like creative nonfiction in some sense, sure. um, you know, so I used a little creative freedom when I wrote it. But yes, there were many, uh, it's, it's based on true events for sure. Yeah. Crafted so well, your words beautiful. Thank you, thank you so much. So you created the uh, the warrior spirit character, and you told the story from the point of view of that warrior spirit. Yes, very yes. interesting. Thanks to you, Eric, because when I did we did the course together um, of the um, you know when uh, your the course with you. And, you know, when you told us that we should also tell stories from different perspectives, different characters of the story. And that really, really uh, is something I learned among many other things with, you know, when I did the course with you. With, and um, so, yes, I wanted to tell the story from a different perspective, from the perspective of the warrior spirit. Yeah, it worked. Thank you. And you really have, have um, grown as a storyteller. You you told this story in such a relaxed and natural tone. It was like we were all in the room together, just talking together, you know? Uh, amazing. Thank you, Eric. You know, I'm always encouraging storytellers to, to tell in a candid way. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've, you've done it. Thank you. I'm very grateful. Mm -hmm. Very grateful for all. Um, I have, yeah, it's it's so nice. And we have such a beautiful storytelling community here. And, you know, it's so nice to have you as a mentor. And, you know, it's beautiful. Thank you so much. Yeah, but uh, but please also tell me if there's any way I can improve or I'm always open to suggestions. So, yes. Does anyone else have any thoughts? Jay? Yeah, I have a good suggestion. Um, keep the story as is, but you need an illustrator to make the pictures. <laughs> it's so visual, the story. And uh, I live in Eastern Europe for years, so my ear, English ear, needed a few minutes to be tuned to your Indian accent, English, and then, then it was so clear. Um, yes, I agree with Dada. The, the the wording, the presentation, your face, your eyes, great. So this guy's your mentor, huh? Uh, she she attended a, a storytelling workshop I I led. Yes. Terrific, terrific. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you, Eric. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for uh, coming and listening to the story. It's very, very encouraging. Thank you. Very good. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording now.